The chase scene has been a staple of cinematics for a long time now. Bullet, Vanishing Point, James Bond movies, Gone in 60 Seconds, they've all had extraordinarily memorable chase scenes. What happens when you take a scene and turn it into a movie? Is it still worth going to see? Mad Max asks that question. But is the answer yes? Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire! Ooh. So which is it? Is Mad Max 40 years of car porn in the desert or the path to the promised land? I don't know about the promised land, but certainly an oasis amidst the dunes. I'm not entirely sure if I'm in the minority here, uh, but I was pleasantly surprised by how good the movie was. Uh, I started out not being really interested in seeing it whatsoever, uh, and then more and more people uh, whose cinematic opinion I respect the hell out of, uh, they just kept on coming up to me and espousing the virtues uh, of this movie. And uh, so finally I, I kind of turned a little bit and uh, decided that I wanted to go see it. And I didn't have my hopes up for much because the, the, the previews for this thing... Uh, it just looks like a bunch of car porn in the desert. And as much as I appreciate a well-turned engine as much as the next guy does, um, I kind of wanted a little bit more than that. And everybody that I talked to pretty much said, mm, yeah, the movie for the most part is just a bunch of car porn in the desert. But they still kept on talking about how transcendent the whole thing was. Um, I'm delighted to say that the movie was a heck of a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Um... I won't sit here and tell you that it's an absolutely fabulous movie. Uh, I'm not even sure it's a great movie, but it is a very, very good one. Uh, and it's one of those rare films uh, that everything it sets out to do, it actually does exceptionally well. Um, from a character standpoint, of course, Tom Hardy is uh, Mad Max. Uh, I, literally everything that he touches turns to gold. Uh, he doesn't spend a whole lot of time talking, doesn't complete very many of his sentences, but everything that he says... Uh, registers immediately. Every line of his text cuts through whatever is going on, and you hear it, and you understand it, uh, and you want him to say more. Um, uh, Charlie Theron as Furiosa uh, was was not too bad, uh, but every single time somebody said her name, Furiosa, uh, I could not help of thinking of uh, an old and living color bit uh, and an old Jim Carrey character called Veracosa. Uh, anybody who is familiar with that will have just collapsed into gales of laughter um well you know the supporting characters for the movie are all very very good all very uh well put together not just generic bland thugs um the war boys uh were all fantastic and all had a, had a very unique uh very stand out from the scenery appearance so they did, they did a good job whoever came up with that um the the movie's main bad guy emote and joe um again was a, 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 a bad guy for bad guy's sake yeah, he was a very very simple bad guy and, and there wasn't anything complicated about him and sometimes people are just pricks and uh, you know that's that's good enough for a movie villain and they didn't do anything overly complex with him uh, and uh, that that worked for the movie uh, the rest of the supporting cast was also great all the weird wanderers out in the desert the baby midget that looks through a telescope um, the uh, everything that it really set out to do, the costumes were all were all fantastic. The casting was all great. Um, you definitely have to try and watch it on the big screen, which is probably going to be a challenge for those of you who haven't gone out to the theater and seen it yet, because I'm pretty sure this is the last weekend it's going to be uh, in theaters. Definitely grab it on Blu-ray. Definitely go watch it on the biggest uh, TV with a lot of sound system that you can get your hands on. Um, because the practical effects in this movie with the vehicles are so flipping gorgeous. Uh, 40 years worth of car porn in the desert doesn't sound entertaining until you actually start watching it. And it is so well done. And I hesitate to use the word captivating because that's a cliche. Uh, 
But I'm going to go ahead and say captivating anyway. You could just sit there and watch horrible crap happen in the desert over and over and over again. It never gets old. It never gets stale. The manner that they dispose of these cars uh, out there in the sand dunes is just absolutely fantastic. Somebody had to sit and think all that crap up, and it, it paid off. Uh, one set piece in particular in the middle of a sandstorm uh, is, is uh, lovely, as it were. Um... So yeah, the practical effects were just off the chain. Something else that surprised me, given the uh, overly classical tone to the music in the trailers, was the score for the movie uh, also was extraordinarily well done. Uh, the composer uh, composer credit goes to somebody named Junkie XL, uh, who I have never heard of before, uh, but apparently he's also responsible for the score that's going to get laid down for uh, Superman vs. Batman. Uh, or Batman v Superman, or whatever the hell it's supposed to be, when that comes out. But uh, for having never heard of this guy before, that's certainly not uh, in your mark for somebody being an instant failure. And the score to this movie was absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm, I'm seriously thinking about looking it up online and giving it another listen to, maybe on YouTube, and then and making a purchase. It, it was very well done. It fit the movie, uh, but it was beautiful in its own right as well. Uh, the story was... I'll go ahead and say it was lightweight and simple, but uh, serviceable. There are a lot of people, uh, based on the stuff that I've read online, that are, are, are just diggling as, diggling, <laughs> digging as hard as they can, just hand over fist, trying to find deeper meaning in the story, uh, in all of the symbolism in this movie. And quite frankly, I'm not going to do that. And if you watch it, you probably shouldn't try to do it either, uh, because it will take away from watching all of the car crashes in the desert. Uh, you really don't care. <laughs> the, the big vehicle in the middle is supposed to live, and all the other guys, screw them, they're hosed. You really don't care. You, you, just, you sit there clapping happily, uh, waiting for the next vehicle to die. A horrible, flaming death. Uh, the, the, the lack there of a deep... Uh, and engrossing storyline is really not a big issue uh, for this movie at all. Uh, so that's a, a good thing. There are a few loopholes in the story for the people that are paying attention, uh, but none of them that are big enough to irritate me a whole lot. Uh, again, if you... Uh if, if you, you, you're busy, uh, oh hell, I was trying to make a, the Bruce Lee metaphor about the finger pointing to the moon and uh, don't stare at the finger or you'll miss the moon. And I didn't work at all. Um... I have to go back to Tom Hardy again for a second. I, I, uh, everything that he touches in this movie is phenomenal. Um, his, his, his acting, uh, for the few words that he says is, uh, he, he carries so much, uh, in everything that he does. It really, really is. He's one of the best parts of the movie, if not the best part. Um, the one thing that probably bothered me about this film more than anything else was the fact that it is light on story. And on one hand, uh, that's a good thing because it allows you to concentrate on all of the mayhem uh, that's going on out in the desert. On the other hand, I, and I'm not sure how they did this, for such a simple setting, there's something about the world that they've built and that is so rich. Uh, I want to know more uh about what happened to Max and, and why he is the way he is. I want to know a little bit more about Furiosa and where she came from. I want to know how Emote and Joe got so jacked up. Uh, you know, I want to know more about the pasts of all of uh, his, his concubine. Uh, I want to know more about it. I, I want to know the story behind, behind some of the war boys. Um, I, I want to know more. Uh, and you don't get it in this movie, and that's uh, probably the single most frustrating thing for me, uh, in spite of the fact that it seems overly simplistic uh, and overly base uh, on the outside. There's just so much potential here uh, that I, I'm really legitimately interested in uh, in the characters. Um, just shifting gears here. <laughs> Car pun. Um, a lot of people have been... Uh, we're griping online before the movie came out about how it was just going to be gratuitous violence for violence sake and I can honestly say um, that while there is a lot of violence it is in service of the scene and in service of the movie um, I fully expect to see tons uh, expected to see tons of blood and guts and this and that and the other and for the most part um, it is carnageless or, or, or low 
you know, low levels of that. Um, I hesitate to use the word tasteful, uh, but they could have gone a million different directions with uh, the levels of human on human violence in this movie, and they chose not to. And it's uh, it makes the movie so much better for it. Um, I guess the other thing, uh, the the last thing that I would caution you about uh, is uh, once you start watching this movie, don't let anything interrupt it. Watch it from end to end. Keep your eyes on the screen the whole time. Otherwise, you will miss some genuine, what the hell was that moments. Um, There there are several different points in this movie where the camera is just snapping through little one-second clips of ambiance. And, you know, it's a rock here, and it's a group of people there fixing vehicles, and it's a bunch of topless women being milked, and... Wait, go back to that last one. Um, odd, just a little bizarro... What what did I just see? Uh, and and to pay attention, the movie's full of little things like that. Um, again, nothing, uh, nothing gratuitous for the sake of gratuity, but all in, in service of the building of the world. Uh... And as I sit here talking about this, uh, again, I'm not, uh, I won't sit here and say that this was a great movie, but it was a very, very good one. Uh, and from beginning to end, it was enjoyable to watch. Uh, it really, really was. So, um, yeah. I guess in closing, uh, go see Mad Max. Normally I have something more pithy to say than that, but uh, I'm afraid I'm all out.